You've said, witness, that you don't recollect protesting against this order of the 17th of September, 1942. Yeah. I want to try and refresh your memory. Would you look at a document D865? That will be GB458, my lord. That's an extract from an interrogation of Admiral Dönitz on the 6th of October. I should say that the record was kept in English and therefore the translation into German does not represent necessarily the Admiral's actual words. <coughs> Would you look at the second page of that document at the end of the first paragraph. It's the end of the first paragraph on page two also in the English text. <coughs> He's dealing, the Admiral is dealing with the order the 17th September 1942. And in that last sentence in that paragraph, he says, I remember that Captain Gott, the spelling in English was wrong, Captain Gott and Captain Hessler were against this telegram. <coughs> they told me that expressly because they said that can be misunderstood. But I, must, I said I must tell that now to these boats to prevent the losses in this 1%. I must give them a reason so they don't feel obliged to do that. Do you remember protesting now? saying that can be misunderstood? Nein, das weiß ich nicht mehr. Would you look at a further extract on page three of the English, page two at the bottom of the page of the German. Thus I sent the second telegram. <coughs> the end of the first paragraph on page three of the English. Thus I sent the second telegram in order to avoid that I should have future losses. The second telegram happened on my instigation. I am completely and personally responsible for it because Captains Gott and Hessler both expressly stated that they considered the telegram as ambiguous or liable to be misinterpreted. Do you remember that now? Would you look at a further statement to the same effect? On page five of the English, first paragraph, page four of the German text, third paragraph. <coughs> He's been asked the question, why was it necessary to use the language that I read to you before Lord, that's the bottom of page four. That the most primitive demands for the conduct of warfare by annihilating ships and crews are contradicted by efforts to rescue <coughs> members of the crews. The last clause of the first sentence. And he answers, these words do not correspond to the telegram. They do not in any way correspond to our actions in the years of 39, 40, 41 and 42 as I have plainly shown you by the Laconia incident. I would like to emphasize once more that the captains Gott and Hessler both were violently opposed to the sending of the telegram. <coughs> Do you still say that you don't remember protesting against the sending of that telegram? Ich habe wiederholt gesagt, dass ich mich daran nicht erinnern kann. I didn't get uh, any answer, I don't know. I don't know if your lordship got the English. I'm afraid I didn't. Uh, is... No, I'm sorry.
And I'll show you one more extract, the document D-866, which will become GB-459. That's a further interrogation on the 22nd of October. <coughs> the first question on the document. Do you consider this order to be contrary to the prize rules of the German Navy issued in the beginning of the war? And the last sentence of the first paragraph of the answer, Gott and Hessler told me, don't make this wireless, you see. One day there can be a wrong appearance about it. There can be a misinterpretation <coughs> of that. You don't remember using those words? Nein. You were an experienced staff officer, were you not? Yeah. You knew the importance of drafting <coughs> an operational order with absolute clarity, did you not? These orders you were issuing were going to young commanders between 20 and 30 years of, old, of, of age, were they not? 20 years, at least, too young. At that time, they were at the end of 20 years. Yes. Yeah. Do you say that this order is not ambiguous? Jawohl. Es ist vielleicht, wenn man einen Satz aus dem Zusammenhang nimmt, äh, kann man vielleicht in Zweifel kommen. Aber nicht <coughs> mit dem ganzen Befehl. What was the point of the words, rescue runs counter to the rudimentary demands of warfare for the destruction of enemy ships and crews? <clears throat> what was the point of those words, if this was merely a non-rescue order? Es war eine Begründung äh, für den übrigen Teil des Befehls und eine Gleichsetzung der Schiffe und der Besatzungen, die gegen unsere U-Boote kämpften. You see, all your other orders were so clear, weren't they? Have you got the defense documents there in the witness box? Ich glaube ja. Would you look, Nein, at, look uh, at the defense Dönitz document number eight on page 10? <coughs> That's the document nicht here. Page 10 of that book. Let me just read you the second paragraph. U boats may attack at once enemy merchant vessels on which armament is recognized without doubt, respectively the armament of which is announced by the Sea Warfare Command on the basis of unobjectionable evidence. And then it's the, next, the next sentence. As far as circumstances permit, measures shall be taken for the rescue of the crew if the possibility <coughs> of endangering the U-boat is excluded. Now, no commander could go wrong with that order, could he? Perfectly clear. Look at another one. D642 at page 13. 
<clears throat> well, it's the last paragraph of the order, page 15. Now, this is a non-rescue order. You got it. Paragraph E. Standing order 154. Do not rescue okay. crew members, nor take them along, and don't bother about boats of ships. <clears throat> Weather conditions and proximity of land are no consequence. Concern yourself only with the safety of your own boat and try to achieve additional successes as soon as possible. We must be hard in this war. The enemy started it in order to destroy us and we have to act accordingly. Now that was perfectly clear, wasn't it? That was a non-rescue order. <coughs> Das war ebenso klar wie der Befehl, um den es geht. Ja. Well, look at one or two more before, and then we come back to that order. Page 45, another order. Order from Flag Officer U-Boats, reading the third line to take on board captains with their <coughs> papers of ships sunk, if it is possible, without endangering the boat or without impairing the fighting capacity. <coughs> Perfectly clear to, to anybody exactly what was intended, wasn't it? Das ist überhaupt kein Befehl, sondern ist auszugsweise Wiedergabe im Kriegstagebuch. Yes, it's reciting the words of the order. And then on the next page, in paragraph four, try under all circumstances to take prisoners <coughs> if that can be done without endangering the boat. Again, perfectly clear. Look at the next page, page 47. Paragraph one of your order of the 1st of June, 1944, the last sentence. Every effort, therefore every effort, must be made to bring in such prisoners as far as possible without endangering the boat. Now you've told us that this order of the 17th September 1942 <coughs> was intended to be a non-rescue order. That's right, isn't it? Jawohl. I ask you again, what was meant by the sentence, rescue runs counter to the rudimentary demands of warfare for the destruction of enemy ships and crews? Es ist eine Begründung für den übrigen Teil und er besagt, dass die Schiffe mit den Besatzungen, die bewaffnet und ausgebildet waren, um die U-Boote zu bekämpfen, gleichzusetzen waren. Why do you speak about the destruction of crews if you don't mean the destruction of crews? Es handelt sich darum, ob die Schiffe mit ihren Besatzungen zu zerstören waren, was etwas ganz anderes ist, als die Besatzungen zu zerstören, zu vernichten, nachdem sie nicht mehr auf ihren Schiffen waren. And something entirely different from merely not rescuing the crews, isn't that the fact? Ich verstehe diese Frage nicht. Destruction of crews is quite different from <coughs> non-rescue of crews. Die Zerstörung, solange das Schiff und die Besatzung zusammengehören. You're not answering the question, are you? <coughs> Put it you once again. Destruction of crews is quite different from non-rescue of crews. Das Zerstören der Mannschaft ist etwas anderes als das Nicht-Retten von Schiffbrüchigen, jawohl. Yeah. Were those words merely put in to give this order what you described as a lively character, which an order should have? Das kann ich im Einzelnen nicht mehr sagen. Ich sagte schon, dass ich mich an die Entstehungsgeschichte dieses Befehls im Einzelnen äh, nicht erinnern kann. Colonel Fillmore, the 
Tribune has already said to the witness that uh, the documents speak for itself. Lord, yes. <clears throat> Would you just look at the next document in the prosecution book? That's D663. On the last <coughs> sentence, on the last sentence of that document, in view of the dis <coughs> desired destruction of ships' crews, are you saying that it wasn't your intention at this time? to destroy the crews, if you could? Ich dachte, es wurde von den Schiffbrüchigen gesprochen. Well, it's the, the same thing to some extent, isn't <coughs> it? Ships' crews, once they're torpedoed, become survivors. Danach sind die Schiffbrüchige, jawohl. Well, will you now answer the question, was it not your intention at this time to destroy the crews or survivors, if you like, if you could? Wenn Sie die Schiffbrüchigen hier meinen, diese Frage umfasst ja zweierlei. Bezüglich der Schiffbrüchigen, nein. Well, if you're not prepared to answer the question, I'll pass on. Do you remember the case of Captain Lieutenant Eck? Uh, über den Fall von Captain Lieutenant Eck habe ich uh, ausschließlich von englischen und amerikanischen Offizieren gehört und einiges hier jetzt, nachdem ich in Deutschland bin wieder. Do you know that he was on his first voyage when his U-boat sank the Peleus and then machine gunned the survivors? Did you know that? He'd set out from the 5th U-boat flotilla at Kiel, of where Merla was briefing the commanders, <coughs> hadn't he? Das muss so gewesen sein. Yeah. Now, if instead of taking the whole blame upon himself for the action which he took, if he had defended his action, under this order of the 17th of September, 1942, are you saying that you could have court-martialed him for disobedience? Das wäre möglich gewesen. In view of the wording of your order, do you say that? Das wäre eine Frage, die im Gericht zu klären gewesen wäre. Übrigens hat Eck sich nicht auf diesen Befehl bezogen, soweit ich gehört habe. Can you explain to the tribunal how the witness Merla was allowed to go on briefing that this was an annihilation order from September 42 to the end of the war? Ich weiß nicht, wie Möhle dazu gekommen ist, diesen Befehl so auszulegen. Gefragt danach hat er mich jedenfalls nicht. You realize that he is putting his own life in great jeopardy by admitting that he briefed as he did, don't you? Jawohl. You also know, don't you, that every commander he briefed was subsequently seen either by yourself or by Admiral Dönitz before he went out. And again when he came back. In general. In general. Are you seriously telling the tribunal that none of these officers who were briefed that this was an annihilation order, that none of them raised the question, either with you or with Admiral Dönitz? Es ist mit Bezug auf diesen Befehl unter keinen Umständen davon gesprochen worden. 
<clears throat> well, I suggest to you, you know, that this order was very carefully drafted to be ambiguous, deliberately, so that any U-boat commander who was prepared to behave as Eck did was entitled to do so under the order. <clears throat> Isn't that right? And that you and Hessler, you tried to stop this order being issued. Ich sagte schon, dass ich mich nicht daran erinnern kann. Lord, I have no further questions. Is there any other cross-examination? 